Basic Sequencing with Ladder Logic Diagrams. Now that we're through some of the more boring instructions, and we had to cover those though because you're going to encounter them in the field and you need to be comfortable and know how to read them. So now we're getting into sequence where we're actually going to do something that makes sense. Now in this case, this is how you download the program, all switches off, so it says OK to start. But to explain OK to start, let me turn off a sensor, or, or rather turn on a sensor to show that the conditions are not OK to start. These could be sensor 1, 2, and 3 could be many sensors out there in your process, and you want them to all be off before you start up the sequence. So you would go out there and do whatever you needed to do to clear so you're okay to start. And once you push the start push button, now you've step zero is complete. So between okay to start and the rest of these rungs, you can have as many conditions in there as you want. I just picked something really simple to illustrate this. So we hit the start push button, released it, we latched on a bit, step zero complete. Now with step zero complete, it's waiting for sensor one to be on, two and three to be off. So if I was monitoring a machine out there, sensor three could go on, and even though sensor one goes on, it still is not gonna complete the next step until sensor three goes off. Then see it says step one complete, and now it's waiting for a new pattern for sensor 1, 2, and 3. So if you look at my pattern for sensor 1, 2, and 3, rungs 2, 3, and 4, on, off, 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 on, off, off, on, on. So let's say that I completed the bottom one first, okay? We got step 1 complete, step 2 is not complete. So let's turn on step, th on, on sensor 3, okay? Then turn on sensor one and turn off sensor one. I'm sorry, turn on sensor two and off sensor one. Well, the pattern is complete to complete step three, but we're not in that step. We are step one complete waiting for the bit pattern right above it. So if I turn off three, that completes step two, and now it's waiting for this bit pattern, and that completes step three. And of course, there's nothing here to clear this. Once you've gone through, the steps are complete. You look in the top rung, rung zero, step zero, step one, step two, complete. As long as they've been completed, you're not going to restart this sequence. So we need to add something to reset the sequence. So we added another rung that uses input four to unlatch these four bits. So now let's observe here. Notice that these, the state of these sensors is in the last step, step three. So when step three is complete, the machine stops. If we hit the reset button, that clears all these step complete bits, but we're not ready to start again until sensor two and three change states. Now it's okay to start again. So we could easily tie step three complete into the reset down below and make it start over again. Keep in mind that the machine is your hand that flips these sensors back and forth. So we've got three sensors and they're controlled by your fingers. So this is not really a process. It just demonstrates how you can use latches to initiate conclusions based on a bit pattern. Our bit pattern is sensor 1, 2, and 3. So if we start this process, we're okay to start. If we push the start push button, step 0 is complete. And now we're just going to work our way down through. Let's see, we want input 1 on, and then we want, I'm sorry, input 0 on. Then we want it off. Then we want input 1 on. And then we want input three on. Hit the reset button. We're back to the beginning. Now I did have questions in the manual. 
the first one was pressing the start push button completes the conditions to latch step zero complete. What is the logic waiting on to complete step zero? Well, that seems like poor grammar because I, I gave you the answer then asked the question. <laughs> so it's waiting for you to press the start push button. Going a little further here, you can see that I forgot to assemble. Going a little further here, we took step three complete and we replaced the reset push button with step three complete. That was one phase. So when step three is complete, it unlatched the complete bits, which would have turned, made this true again, and you would have went back to okay to start if the sensors were in the right position. Then we added the sensors have to be in the right position in order to reset the sequence, so to speak. And then we put the reset push button back in as a method for the operator. If they cleared the machine and got everything back in the right position, they could hit the reset button to clear the logic. So if we operate this, it says OK to start. We hit the start push button. Now we're waiting for sensor one. And now we're waiting for sensor one and two. And now we're waiting for sensor three. Okay, so step three is complete, but until all the sensors are back in the right position, it clears and it's back to okay to start. This is real simple logic. Keep in mind that in the real world, these uh, bits, B3, 0, B3, 1, B3, 2, and B3, 3, you know, the step 0, step 1, step 2, step 3 complete, those bits would probably be used to energize outputs that energize field devices, output field devices that cause motion or some sort of activity in the process and the sensors respond. So right now if we hit the start push button, it's waiting for sensor one. So in other words, B300, step zero complete. Let's say that we use that bit then to turn on some sort of an output and that output moves something until sensor one since the position, this is okay, that step is complete. And then step one causes more motion that would pull the motion off of sensor one and onto sensor two. Now in the manual, I talked about cartons traveling on a conveyor because that is much easier to visualize. And now we're simply waiting for something to arrive at sensor three. And again, that turns on some kind of an output device that causes motion that should pull back these sensors and then it resets. It's back in the home position and ready to run another sequence. So this is really fundamental sequencing logic here. We're using latch and unlatch because that's the simplest to write code for. However, you will find that it is not that popular in the real world because if you unlatch something, I mean, if you latch it, you have to unlatch it. Matter of fact, we used to have a saying, when you use latches, you have to unlatch the whole world. Now, this is not a full process here. I mean, this is nothing. So even a simple process is probably going to have 70 or 80 rungs of logic, absolute minimum, 70 to 80 rungs of logic. And because these are all individual lungs, they're not rungs, they're not all going to be in the same spot. So the unlatches aren't going to be right next to the latches. So if you latch something, you have to remember that you have to unlatch it. The next thing we did, we added these two rungs of logic. Again, we're using latch and unlatch. If it's okay to start and you push the start button, then it latches a bit. And we're using the lights just so you have something to see give you a little action. Latches the bit, output 0, 1. In other words, output 1. And we use output 1 down here to complete step 2. So we basically took out the OK to start, start push button from down here, put it in this rung, and we're using that bit here. And now we've got the reset button and the stop push button, both unlatching cycle running. So if I hit the start push button, 
see this you see the exact same thing down here that you saw before step zero complete now if I hit the stop push button that drops it out and the reset button will clear it so there's a difference between stopping it and resetting it let's do that again start it let's say we complete step one and then we push the stop push button okay it's the steps are still complete everything's still there so if we push the start push button again see we can't get it to go again because we, we don't have OK to start. So we would have to reset it, get the sensor back, and then start it again. These are just little uh, small steps and we keep adding logic to make our sequence logic more complete. Now instead of using this fat rung here, I mean putting in all these I mean, we've only got four steps here, zero, one, two, and three. Well, let's say we had, you know, 12 steps. Putting 12 of these in parallel, uh, that makes for ugly looking code. So instead, because we were smart enough to put all of our step completes in B3 word zero, we can simply replace this with a clear B3 zero. Delete these rungs, or branch arounds. and it serves the exact same purpose. So we'll go through, we have step one complete. Let's do sensor one, two, three, put the sensors back. Notice that you see the first four bits here set in B30. Then we put those sensors back into the home position. And now we've reset, we've got cycle uh, step zero complete and we're ready to run another sequence. I mean it's waiting for sensor one again. If we wanted it to come to a complete stop then we would have to also unlatch output one and we could do that simply by putting a branch around Now we'll step it through again. We do sensor one, sensor two, sensor three, put them back in the right position. And now we've, we've stopped. Step zero is not already complete like it was before we added this unlatch on cycle running. So you see how you just kind of build your sequence a little bit at a time. I did have you shuffle your rungs around. In other words, right now, these rungs are in a specific order that makes sense logically to me in, in terms of reading the code. You know what I mean? You want to get the cycle running. And we put the unlatch for cycle running right underneath of it so it was easy to see what starts it and what stops it. Then we had OK to start and then we went through our sequence and then we cleared our steps. But you could rearrange any of these rungs in any order you like, and it's still going to execute the same. So the answer to the question was, does the sequence still execute correctly? Yes, it does. In other words, this logic is not scan dependent. If the rungs are executed in a different order, it's not going to affect the outcome.